John Coltrane was a pioneer of modal and free jazz and is to this day one of the most influential saxophonists to ever live. He was born in North Carolina in 1926, a new tragedy from an early age. During his early teens, he lost his father, aunt and grandparents in quick succession, leaving his mother to raise both him and his cousin alone. He briefly joined the Navy at 19, where his first recordings were made towards the end of the Second World War. And once discharged in 1946, he dove headfirst into the developing jazz scenes, exposing himself to a world of new music. A wider area of listening opened up for me. There were many things that people like Hawk and Ben and Tab Smith were doing in the 40s that I didn't understand, but I felt emotionally. This idea of feeling the music more than understanding would linger throughout his musical career, as levels of spirituality would exist in one way or another. This bond with the spiritual world would also be ultimately responsible for helping end his heroin addiction that began in the late 1940s. He worked on and off with musicians such as Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk while beginning to develop his chord substitution cycles, known as the Coltrane Changes. These are mostly known today through his revolutionary album Giant Steps, but have continued to influence and inspire musicians even up to the present day. I plan to explore both the Coltrane changes and Giant Steps with much more detail in a later video. Coltrane continued to branch out experimentally and began to move towards modal and free jazz, citing John Gilmore as a particular influence. Gilmore had worked for a long time with Sun Ra's orchestra, which was heavily influenced by Ra's cosmic mysticism and alien origin beliefs. This mysticism would blend into Coltrane's own developing spiritual ideas. It was at this stage that he began to really divide critics and was classified by some as a pioneer of anti-jazz. This move towards the exploratory and the avant-garde grew throughout the rest of his career as he fully embraced and pushed the world of free jazz. His albums from 1965 onward feature many experimental and extended techniques that he developed and learned alongside fellow saxophonist Eric Dolphy. He continued to push and change his sounds, often to the displeasure of his colleagues and critics. Longtime colleague McCoy Tyner recalled, he was constantly pushing forward, he never rested on his laurels, he was always looking for what's next, he was always searching, like a scientist in a lab, looking for something new, a different direction, he kept hearing these sounds in his head. It is speculated that he may have begun using LSD in this period, which fueled this search for music that he couldn't understand but could feel on an emotional level. Personally, I believe that this exploratory aspect of him was always present, even from the very beginning. In 1967, at the relatively young age of 40, Coltrane passed away from liver cancer. Most were unaware that he was suffering with this illness, and his sudden death left a seismic impact on the music scene, notably with his musician wife Alice Coltrane. His path in music has continued to influence musicians in every generation to find inspiration in one of the many facets of his wide-ranging but short career. Plenty of his compositions have become jazz standards, and are regularly played by thousands. His numerous techniques, chord progressions and modal works can also be traced through to many forms of modern jazz. The African Orthodox Church canonized him as a saint in 1982, saying, God dwells in the musical majesty of his sounds. This is a fitting legacy for a man who had been spiritually driven throughout his later life and had learned a great deal from as many religions as he could find. If we can take anything from Coltrane, it is the power of feeling something emotionally that transcends our understanding. Exposing yourself to new worlds can be incredibly powerful, if you let it. <laughs>